My name is Dr. Kurt Belk, and I'm a board-certified emergency physician and the medical director of the Urgency Room. I want to thank you for choosing us as your health care provider. The following video offers follow-up care instructions to your recent visit. I'm Dr. Susie Hafferman, a board-certified emergency room physician. You saw a doctor at the urgency room today because you experienced a nosebleed. Nosebleeds, which doctors call epistaxis, are very common. In fact, almost every person has had at least one in their lifetime. Nosebleeds can be scary and dramatic, but most of the time, they're not a sign of a serious problem. A large majority of nosebleeds happen when a blood vessel at the front of the nose bleeds. This is called an anterior nosebleed. A posterior nosebleed occurs when an artery at the back of the nose begins to bleed. This type is rare. Nosebleeds are often caused by dry air or nose picking. People who have allergies, high blood pressure, or on blood thinners tend to get them as well. If you or your child gets a nosebleed, it's important to know how to take care of it. With the right self-care, most nosebleeds will stop on their own. Your urgency room doctor may have told you to use a decongestant nose spray like Afrin in both nostrils in the morning and at night for the next three days. If your doctor recommended Afrin, don't use it for more than three days at a time because it will cause nasal congestion. Every night before bed, apply a small amount of Vaseline to the inside of your nostrils to keep them moist. Set up a humidifier in your bedroom to put moisture in the air. Don't blow your nose or put anything in your nose for three days after your visit to the urgency room. Sniffling is okay, and you can dab the outside of your nose. For the next three days, please don't bend so that your head goes below your waist, and avoid lifting anything so heavy you have to strain. If you receive nasal packing, please don't remove the packing until you are seen by an ear, nose, and throat specialist. If your urgency room doctor gave you a prescription for antibiotics with the nasal packing, please take them as directed. If your nose starts to bleed again while you're at home, follow these steps to treat it. Blow your nose to get rid of some of the clots that have formed inside your nostrils. This may increase the bleeding temporarily, but that's okay. Spray decongestant nose spray, such as Afrin, into both nostrils to constrict the blood vessels. Sit or stand while you bend forward slightly at the waist. Don't lie down or tilt your head back because you could swallow blood, which leads to vomiting. Grip the soft part of both nostrils at the bottom of your nose and squeeze your nose closed for at least five minutes for children or 10 to 15 minutes for adults. You can use your fingers or a clip and use a clock to time yourself. The biggest mistake people make is to release the pressure on the nose to check whether the bleeding has stopped. Releasing the pressure too soon or too often hurts your chances of stopping the bleeding. If your nose continues to bleed, repeat all the steps I just mentioned one more time. Return to the urgency room if you can't get the bleeding to stop after following the instructions you heard in this video, your nose is bleeding a very large amount of blood, you get pale, faint, or tired, a nosebleed happens after recent nasal surgery or if you have a known nasal tumor, you have new serious symptoms such as chest pain, or you get a nosebleed after an injury and you are concerned you could have other injuries such as a broken bone. If you keep having nosebleeds, schedule an appointment with your regular doctor or with an ear, nose, and throat specialist. If you have worries or questions, don't hesitate to come and see us at the urgency room any day of the week. These videos are intended to provide helpful, health information to the general public. They are not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice. You should not use this information to diagnose or treat health problems. And you should not use these videos in place of a call or visit to a medical professional. Talk with your physician about the proper treatment for your particular condition. And always follow your physician's advice. If you think you need an ambulance or are experiencing a medical emergency, please dial 911 immediately.